Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out the Turtle camera from Cadex. This is a micro HD camera similar to the Runcam Split Mini. In this case we have a single 20x20 20 20 size board. And another difference, another actually major difference here with the Cadex camera is that it has an M12 lens on an M8 lens. We'll go over all this here in uh, more detail of course. Uh, now if you are coming here for the review and know about the giveaway that I announced in the live unboxing, I'll have instructions on the um, giveaway a little bit later in the video, so you want to stay tuned for that. But for now, I'll go ahead and get right into the review, and we'll talk about the camera and all the things I've found out about it since uh, I've got it. And you can see here that they've gone to this uh, different kind of a cable here. It's not a ribbon cable like you have on the Runcam Slip Mini. It's just this, you know, individual wires, it looks like, and they're calling it a DJI cable. I'm not sure why they're calling it that, but... You can see that it has a similar type of connector on the board there to the ribbon cable. So basically it's kind of like a ribbon cable but uh, without the plastic holding all the individual wires together. All you have is uh, this little piece of tape here to hold all the wires together there. You can see it's fairly long so uh, depending upon what kind of a drone you put it in you might have to work with uh, you know, wrapping the wire around something to keep it a little shorter. To, uh, for example, like keeping it underneath the board because a lot, a lot of frames, the, the the mounting point for the camera board is like right behind the camera, kind of like this, which is kind of what I had to do for the uh, build I put this in, the uh, X Hover B-roll. I'll show you that here in a second. But if you have having to have the camera board further away, you know, say in the back of the drone, then you have plenty of wire here, and it looks like it's uh, yeah, it's over three inches. It's about three and a and a three quarters of an inch of cable here, so plenty of wire if you need it. And I don't think the connector over here on this side is accessible. Now for the Cadex camera, it looks like instead of having the case coming all the way in the back and uh, housing the smaller board inside here, they made a, the board here a little bit bigger and then they put this little plastic piece on the back here to protect the electronics. Not sure if that's necessary or not, uh, but they put that there obviously also to protect the uh, wire uh, connector here as well. Now let me just uh, show you how, what this camera looks like compared to the Split Mini. I have one right here. In terms of the weights, uh, the weight of the uh, Turtle camera is about 13.6 grams and the Split Mini is about 15.9 grams. So that's the difference in weight. You can see the lenses as well are different. you got the M12 lens on the Turtle and it's, a, they're calling it a turbo eye, eye lens and it's kind of a flat lens there. Uh, supposed to be distortion free. Um, now supposedly you could possibly replace this lens with say a GoPro lens, something like that. Um, not sure if I'm going to be experimenting in that realm because I know that I've done that experiment before and a lot of times you have a lot of uh, fisheye effects on the outer edges of your of your image so I'm sure that they've tried other types of lenses like that and this is probably the best one. Uh, but if <laughs> there's enough interest uh, leave me a comment down below. If you have interest in that leave me a comment below and I could give that a try, uh, but obviously I'll need a lot of people to comment on that, otherwise uh, I'll just uh, move on to something else. But you can see the difference in the lens. Uh, the Split Mini has the M8 lens, and the uh, Cadex has the much larger M12 lens, so that's a, I think that's an improvement. Now the, in terms of the shape of the case here, you can see if you line up the um, mounting holes right here, the back of the camera on the Cadex is a little bit forward compared to the Split Mini. And then the lens here, line that up here. The front part of the lens is almost in the same spot. So similar dimensions, and you can also, if you want to look at it from the side to side. Okay, so if we look at it from the side to side, you can see that it's also about the same width. However, if we look at the shape of the lens area, you can see that the M12 lens is a lot wider. So if you're working with certain frames that are designed for the Split Mini, like the, uh, for example, the X-Hover uh, B-Roll, you know, let me just show you that the, the, the width of this actually makes a difference. So here I have it in the B-Roll, and you can see that the width of this actually butts up against the, uh, the actual 3D printed mount there. So you're limited by your angle and um, it, it, there's limitations in terms of like how much you could tilt this and how 
how much you can tilt it down. And this is the most I could tilt it down and bring the camera down without having these uh, standoffs show up in the picture because it's a very wide field of view. It's 170 degrees field of view. So uh, when you're dealing with these kind of frames here with the standoffs like this, you might have to uh, uh, you might have to angle it down so that the frame doesn't show up in your camera view. Now this camera, the turtle camera, will probably do better in a, a frame like this. This is the El Camino, where you've got the basically two side plates like this, and then you could adjust the uh, angle of the camera here and how much forward or back you want it without having the side plate show up. And of course, uh, you know, depending upon where you, where you line it up, you, you can have pretty much whatever tilt you want without any of the uh, frame showing up in the in the HD video. Okay, so here's just a closer look at the board itself. This is the one side. This is where the there's a four-pin connector here for your cable that comes in, and then this side here is where your SD card goes. And you can probably tell um, that the holes are in a weird spot. Especially this is, this one right here is in a weird spot. So if you're using a 20 by 20 mounting, you're going to only using these three holes. And I noticed that also that the amount of space for components and standoffs is kind of an issue because. Right here, if you try to use one of those uh, regular plastic nylon standoffs, you're not gonna be able, it won't be able to twist, and this one actually doesn't even fit. So you're gonna have to be creative in how you mount stuff. Now, you do include some of these uh, screws and some spacers to mount things. However, I didn't use any of these. I used some like basically uh, rubber washers, like O-rings and stuff like that. Uh, you'll see that at the B-roll build. You'll have to be kind of creative and, and kind of use what you have. But keep in mind that, that because of the spacing here, uh, mounting this is going to be a little bit tricky, but you should be able to figure out. It shouldn't be too hard, but you're only going to have three mount points for the uh, mounting of the camera. Now in terms of the operation of the, of the camera, there's only a single button right here. And uh, that's for uh, star starting and stopping your video. The default is it, it powers on and doesn't auto record, but you can change that in the menu. And I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, to start the recording, you just short press the button. And to stop the recording, you short press the button. Um, if you have it set for auto record, which is what I'm probably going to end up doing, uh, when you power it on, it'll start recording right away. And um, at the end of the flight, you can just press the button to stop your recording. Or if you decide to just unplug the battery, uh, it does save all the video. I, I believe, though, you lose, I think, about a few seconds. I don't, know, I don't remember exactly. I think two or three seconds from the point where you unplug it uh, before that is lost. But pretty much the rest of the video is going to be saved. So if you're wondering about the feature of the unplugging the battery and the video being saved, it does still do that just like the Runcam Split Mini. Okay, so quickly going over the rest of the stuff that comes in here. You get these like aluminum plates for mounting if you want to mount to a 30 by 30 size um, mounting area. So they, they offer these two different aluminum plates and I'm not really sure how these are used, um, but there's no instructions, but these are available to you if you want to use them. Uh, you get this cable here, it's a four pin connector, it goes into the camera board, and then this one goes into your flight controller, and then you have a little cable here for your OSD joystick. And they have an extension here, which you're gonna need to use because uh, it's gonna go into this little Caddx uh, OSD joystick controller board here. And uh, mine didn't come with this, but I heard that other people are getting this. For some reason, mine didn't. If you don't have, if you happen to not, if you happen to get one that doesn't have this, you're going to need to acquire this to change your settings. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to get into the uh, camera settings. I did try to plug in a run cam joystick in here and it didn't work. So you're going to need to get one of the ones for the Cadex cameras to, to actually control the camera settings. Okay, so I got the camera powered on and I have it transmitting to this PV monitor. I'll go ahead and go into the settings now. This does have a on screen display if you happen to want to use it. It shows your battery voltage, uh, pilot name, and power on time. To get into the settings, you just short press the button and you get the settings here uh, OSD settings, video, camera settings, image effect, TV system, so it's PAL and NTC switchable, system settings, TV ratio, and save and exit. Uh, I've updated, updated the firmware on this already. I'll have a little section on how to do the update on the firmware uh, at the end of the the little uh, specs discussion and before the flight demo, if you want to know how to do that, it's pretty easy. The, some of these settings are in the newer version of the firmware. So you might have the firmware from before July 25th. Um, you're not going to get this TV ratio of 4.3. I believe the uh, before this new firmware came out, it was it was FPV view was a 16.9 only. 
but now you can actually switch it from 4.3 to 16.9 if you want to. Uh, so let's go and we'll go to the OSD settings first. And here uh, we can change your name. I'm going to turn all this stuff off because I have Dataflight OSD, so I'm going to turn voltage off and time off, and we'll save. And then the OSD disappears. Go to video. Now here we've added some. They've added some new features. One of the things that they've corrected uh, from the original firmware to the new one is they've increased the bit rate, and that was the complaint that I had. On, on, on the sample video, I think you saw some of the pixelation and the weird color transitions. That has to do with the low bit rate. I believe it was around 12 megabits, whereas the split mini is around 30. And they fixed that in the new firmware. It's now matching the split mini. It's a 30 megabit uh, bit rate. In addition to the bit rate change, they've added additional resolutions. So the default was 1080p, uh, 30, or 60 frames per second, and the other option was 720p. Now they have 1080p 60 and they've added 1080p 30. And then you have 720p 120 frames per second now, which is pretty nice. So I'm gonna leave it on the defaults for uh, for the purposes of this review, but those other options are available if you want. You can uh, loop video if you wanna like, you know, say like uh, create five minute files, for example, you can turn that on there. I'm gonna leave that off. Auto recording is, is by default off. I'm gonna turn that on so when you power on uh, the camera, it will start recording automatically. And you probably want to keep the wide dynamic range on, so I'm going to turn that on. Go ahead and save. Go into camera settings. Here you can adjust your exposure, so you can adjust it uh, up or down. You can see here. I know that some people complain that the image looked overexposed. Here, you, if you feel that's the case, you can just adjust the exposure down to what you feel is necessary. Uh, I'm going to leave it on default here for the purposes of this review. Uh, metering mode is on multi. I think that's it. It captures it. It, it measures uh, multiple areas of the uh, of the uh, of the of uh, the sensor. Where you can change that to spot metering or center. I'm going to leave that on the default. Field of view here. You can adjust that. So if your field of view is uh, is too wide, if you don't like that, you can you can adjust that down. There's three levels. There's high, narrow, and medium. And I'm going to leave it on high. So you can zoom it in basically if you feel like it's too wide. It's, uh, this, the default for the HD recording is 170 degrees and the FPV feed is 145 degrees. But if you feel it's too wide, you can narrow it down. Here you can uh, flip the screen. If you want the connector on the top instead of the bottom, the default is on the bottom. You can see that this is up. This should be this way. If you want the connector to come out the other way, you can turn that off or flip the screen here. So I'm going to leave that off. I'll save and exit. And here under image effect, this is all the defaults here. So there's uh, saturation, sharpness, contrast, brightness. You can change all of those. I think the values go from one, you know, zero to 10. So they're leaving everything in the middle. And that's what the um, uh, the default the default video that you were seeing the other day. I'm gonna leave it on the default. Obviously, if you feel it's too bright or too sharp, you can change all the settings here to whatever you feel is best for you. Okay, so here under system settings, there's a setting called auto boot. I'm not exactly sure what that is, so I'm just going to leave that alone. You can change your language if you want. SD card info here, uh, it'll take up to a 64 gigabyte SD card, and the, the smallest SD card is an 8 gigabyte. I believe I've got a 64 gigabyte in here. Yeah, I've got a 64 gigabyte in here. You can format your card in here if you want. And then this is the system info. Mine is uh, the current firmware I have is version 1.1, uh, dated July 25th. I don't remember what the original firmware was from the factory. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Okay, so to upgrade the firmware, it's pretty easy. You just make sure you copy the file, uh, the firmware file to your the root of your SD card. And then go ahead and put your SD card into the, uh, the board here. And then you're just going to power it on. Uh, it's going to take about uh, 30 seconds for the firmware to load, and then it'll actually shut off the camera. At that point, you can you can unpower it, and then uh, what you want to do is you want to then at that point eject the card. Otherwise, it's going to when you power it up, up again the next time, it will then try and update the firmware again. So, let me just uh, show you what the shows up on the screen here. You'll get the uh, splash screen from Cadex. And then it'll, it'll show a little thing that says updating. It'll start flashing. And this will take about 30 seconds.
Okay, so once it's done flashing, you want to take the SD card out and power it back on. And then we should be able to see that we're on a new firmware version. Go to settings here. I believe the, the firmware version number is the same, but now is dated July 25th. Okay, for those of you that are here for the giveaway, there are some instructions for you to enter the giveaway. First of all, you need to be a subscriber and you need to be able to verify that you're a subscriber. Uh, second, leave a comment below and only one comment. If you leave more than one comment, you will be disqualified. In the comment, uh, please leave some sort of description as to what you're gonna use this camera in. Uh, that'd be kind of useful for the vendor. I, I think that they will be reading that. And then uh, lastly, put the hashtag uh, Cadix giveaway in your comment. And lastly, the last thing you should need to know is that the contest is going to close 24 hours after the, the publication of this video. That's when I'm going to be making the uh, winner selection. So if you are watching this video after 24 hours uh, that the uh, video was published then, then uh, the giveaway is now over. Okay, so this is going to be a really basic latency test because I know that some, some of you guys are asking about latency. I don't have any equipment to measure latency precisely, but I can show you relative latency to the split mini because I know you guys are comparing it to that. You can see if this is better or worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run my finger across the camera here. I'm going to actually show the video at half speed so you'll be able to see how much it's delayed uh, compared to the split mini. So I'm going to put my finger in front of the camera and then pull it back. Okay, so here is the split mini. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you some flight demo footage here, uh, some daytime and nighttime video based on the new firmware. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the bit rates uh, now matching what's coming out of the split mini at 30 megabits per second. Uh, you'll find that I think that the video quality with the new firmware is much improved over the old firmware and I think it's much uh, closer to what the split mini is now so uh, there are some a few things I think they could still improve upon I think some of the uh, light transitions and, and the way the colors are being saturated is a little bit uh, weird on this particular camera versus the split mini but also you know the split mini has it's also has some of its own weirdnesses as well so they, that camera isn't perfect by any means but so you know you're gonna have to take a look at the footage yourself and judge for yourself whether or not this camera is worth the money it's 65 dollars i think the split mini is about 80 so i think it's a, for me i think it's a pretty good deal uh, obviously you know, you're gonna have to check to see if this is going to fit your frame and your particular situation for what you want to use it for but based on the information I've given you. Hopefully that's given enough information to decide whether you want to choose this camera or the split mini. In any event, I'll go ahead and show you some flight demo footage and go ahead and leave all your comments and questions below. Uh, Cadex is a very responsive company. They literally took one day to update the firmware based on just a few things that I thought were, were really glaring. For example, the bit rate and they sent me a firmware within a day. So if you guys leave uh, some constructive comments down below as to what could be improved, as, as give some specific details, examples, for, exa for example, then I think that they can take that feedback and, and improve the former even more and get even a better video quality out of this camera, which I think is really nice. In any event, go ahead and show you some flight demo footage now, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, so for those of you that are obsessed with the FPV feed, uh, you can see here I've overlaid it. On top of the HD video, you can see that it's a subset of the HD video. Um, I have it set to the 4-3 um, aspect ratio, so you can see that the sides of the viewing uh, field of view is missing, which is why it's 145 degrees in the FPV feed and 170 degrees in the um, HD video. So this is what you this is what you can see in terms of uh, what you can see in the goggles in terms of the 4-3 view. This is what I recorded. Um, so for those of you guys that are wondering what that looks like, this is what it looks like. It's I'd say it's pretty similar to the um, feed you got in the Split Mini. Uh, it's a little bit more pixelated. It's kind of like the Runcam Eagle, uh, and in some ways, I, it's kind of hard to describe. 
I didn't find it to be terribly difficult to fly through. I thought it was you know, not not super great, but also not terrible either. 